Where does it follow me? That's handy. You're just not going to believe what I've found. It's not another part of the clan's costume, is it? It's a medieval manuscript. Khan left it in the safe at the Ubu. It's incredible. Is this what he took from Plantark? It could be, which means it's worth enough to kill for. Look there, two guys on the same horse. Oh, yeah. Maybe they couldn't afford one each. What of it? Have you ever heard of the Knights Templar? Their official seal was an image of two knights sharing a horse. Whatever this manuscript means, it's connected with the Templars. How come you know about these knights? I learned about them while writing an article on the Crusades. This guy, named Hughes de Payen, arrived one day at the court of King of Jerusalem. He offered to protect the Christian pilgrims from the displaced Muslim army. The king would be able to guarantee safe transit to Christians in the Holy Land. Safer journeys meant more pilgrims, and pilgrims meant trade and wealth. The Templars proved invaluable to the king as a mercenary army. It was said that they never asked how many the enemy numbered, just where they were. And as the years went by, the Templars grew in wealth and number. They were so rich, even kings came to them for loans. But at the height of their power, they fell foul of the King of France. He rounded them up and turned them over to the Inquisition. Thousands of Templars were subject to torture and confessed to heresy. Of course, at the end of the Inquisition, there wasn't much they wouldn't confess to. The last Grand Master Jacques de Molay was burned alive. But the treasure of the Knights Templar was never found. Jeez, so the treasure is hidden, waiting to be discovered? If there ever was a treasure, it's been lost for 600 years. Anyway, we're supposed to be investigating a serious <coughs> threat of the medieval treasure trove. But maybe that's what the clown and his accomplices are after. Maybe this manuscript is the key. You'd better leave it here for safekeeping. Think about it, George. One guy's already died for it, as you said yourself. Besides, that parchment is fragile. Okay, okay, I'm convinced. You keep hold of it. What are you doing to help trace the killer clown? Research, George. Yeah? You have a copy of the clown's yearbook? I have a telephone and lots of contacts. Oh, well, did you find anything useful? Not yet. I'm employing my first and most useful weapon. What's that? Patience. Oh, I've heard of that. Isn't it a substitute for decisive thinking? <laughs> Have you found out any more about the murders? Well, it may be nothing, but both the clan's victims visited Paris earlier this year. When? The second week of July. They were both here at the same time. Did they meet? I don't know, but I can't imagine it was coincidence. Let's take another look at the manuscript. Oh, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> Let's face it, we need help, George. Someone who knows about these things. Who do you suggest? Indiana Jones? I know a guy who specializes in medieval studies. His name is Lobino. Huh. <laughs> Some stuffy old fossil gets horny over ancient relics, I suppose. Far from it. Andre isn't the stereotypical professor you have in mind. Where can I find this Lobino guy? At the Krun Museum. I'll give you the address. There's a woman looking at her reflection in a mirror, but the reflection has three hideous faces. 
She reminds me of the Wicked Queen in Snow White. She was the one who said mirror, mirror on the wall, wasn't she? She made me cry so much when I was a kid, Mom carried me out of the movie theater. She didn't frighten me in the least. Like I said, I was only a kid. I didn't like the crocodile in Peter Pan either. <laughs> a knight with a crystal ball. Now, there's something written on the scroll beside the knight. Yes, but it's written in Latin. Per disciplinum mea lux videbis. By my teachings, you will see the light. You speak Latin? Where did you learn a trick like that? A trick? I studied law, okay? I can read Latin. Ma, you're touchy. Tell me that again. <laughs> Through my teachings, you will be enlightened. There's a guy working on a loom. He's weaving a carpet or a tapestry. Or a duvet cover. It's a clue to a place, I reckon. Somewhere famed for weaving and ships. Where folk live in barrels? It beats copper boxes. There's a guy with a sword and a bull. The only mythological bull I know of is the Minotaur, but he was only half bull. I don't think I'd like to be half a bull, even if it was the bottom half. <laughs> What's that object between them? It looks like a gem on top of a tripod. I found this in the killer's room. What is it? A credit card? ID. Thomas Merlin of the Gruber Electronics Corporation. Never heard of him or the company. I found this matchbook in the killer's hotel room. It's from the Club Alamut. Never heard of it. Is there anything written inside it? No. What were you expecting? If this was a movie, there'd be a clue. A name or an address. That's no use. There aren't even any matches in it. Oh well, I'll keep it as a souvenir. <laughs> Maybe I'll check out the Kroon Museum. I'm sure you'll find it useful, George. Dramatic music for not moving. There we go. Why did you put me inside the museum? Pardon me. Oui, monsieur? Are you Lobinon? Oh, no. Fancy you mistaking me for him. No. I am the deputy custodian. But Labano does work here. Work? I wouldn't go so far as to call it that. He studies here most days, but as you can see for yourself, not today. Do you know anything about the Knights of the Temple? No, sir. Not a sausage. Do you know anything about medieval manuscripts? Not me, monsieur. I am no scholar. Though people often mistake me for one. It is the uniform, I guess. They see the clothes. They are impressed. And they ask you to park their cars? They ask me to park the... <laughs> no, no, no! <coughs> they assume <coughs> the authority on the exhibits in my care. Whereas you know next to nothing about history. Of course not. All I am saying is, I am no scholar. Not like Monsieur Lobino. Do you recognize this red nose? I don't think so. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, monsieur. Is there any reason why I should? I guess not. Do you recognize this ID pass? Mm, no. What does this tool mean to you? 
That belongs in a museum. Pardon? It is a priceless historical artifact, if I am not mistaken. No, it's a plain old tool for lifting drain covers. <laughs> Have you ever heard of the Club Alamut? Oh no, I don't frequent places like that. Would you like to shake my hand? Uh, not while I'm on duty, monsieur. What do you make of this tissue? It is absolutely disgusting, monsieur. Thanks for your help. Sorry about that. The case contained two rows of silver coins. Each coin on the lower row showed a portrait of a guy with a huge nose. I tried to sneak my hand inside while the... Uh. In the case was a spindly tripod, blackened with age and pitted with rust. It was identical to the tripod pictured on the manuscript. A notice identified it as 15th century from Western Ireland. It had been found in Loch Marne at the site of a Knights Templar preceptory. Ireland! What's that? This tripod was found in Ireland. I will have to ask you to keep your voice down. I'm sorry, I was excited. <laughs> Hey, no! No, monsieur! No! What's wrong? You must not handle the exhibit! I'm sorry. Pardon me. Oui, monsieur? Can you give me any further information about the tripod? Certainly, monsieur. It's infamous. That tripod? That belonged to John D. What's the importance of John Dee's tripod? Dee was the most famous escapologist of the 16th century. The Udini of his time. Don't you mean alchemist? Escapologists use ropes, chains, and handcuffs, not tripods. Well, whatever he was, <laughs> that is the tripod he used in his experiments. What kind of experiments did John Dee perform with his tripod? Oh, the usual. Uh, didn't you study chemistry at school? Yeah, but we skipped over thaumatology. Can I take a closer look at the tripod? What? Get it out of the case? Ah, uh, no! That tripod is protected by a sophisticated surveillance system. How sophisticated? A painfully loud alarm bell. How is the alarm bell triggered? By the slightest pressure on or movement of any part of the case wherein that tripod is situated. It strikes me that to call your alarm system sophisticated is, well, stretching the truth a little. It has never failed yet. The sophistication is in its simplicity. The sign on the tripod says, it was found at a Templar preceptory. It does? Yeah. It doesn't mention John D. at all. Most remiss. You don't know anything about the tripod, do you? <laughs> no, I don't. I never had much of a start in life, you see. I owe a little education again to my uncle. He was an optician, but he also doubled as the village school teacher. He taught me the alphabet. Wait, 19 letters of it. The bottom row of the chart was uh, too small even for him to read, so he left them out. Why don't you start over and enroll for adult education? You know, I never thought of that. Do you think if I studied art and did all my homework, I could be a professor of history? At your age? Dream on. What can you tell me about the collection of coins? The coins. Our example of silver coinage from the reign of uh, Philippe Le Bel, that little old lay buried for centuries in a field on the outskirts of Paris. They're unique. Nothing like them has been found anywhere else in Europe. Who 
was Philippe le Bel? You don't know? Philippe the Fourth, the King of France. Wasn't he the guy who wiped out the Knights Templar? I have no idea, monsieur. All I know is, he was King of France. I don't even know why he was called Philippe le Bel. What can you tell me about the collection of pottery? Those are remains of pots used by the original inhabitants of Paris. The Paris pot people. When did they move out? 15,000 years ago, monsieur. Vanished in the mists of time. Didn't even have time to pack up their pots. I thought the original inhabitants of Paris were a tribe known as the Parisi. That is right, monsieur. Renowned for their pots. You see, in those days, people didn't have much in the way of uh, possessions. A few flints, some animal skins, maybe the odd bone or two. Naturally, when the Parisi came along with their pots, why, everybody wanted one. I guess they must have caused a kind of consumer frenzy. Yeah, oui, they connected the market, cleaned up. You don't know the first thing about those pots, do you? No, monsieur. Why are you engaging him in relic Thanks when he doesn't help? for your help. It was an ancient Egyptian sarcophagus with a beautifully painted effigy of its owner on the lid. Leave it alone. That closet is over 3,000 years old. Closet? It's a sarcophagus. <laughs> the totem pole looked distinctly out of place in the setting of the museum. Pardon me. Oui, monsieur? Forget it. Nothing more to say to him, okay. The rod turned smoothly, and the window above me opened. High above me was a window. The window was wide open. Tripod was definitely the one on the man, the one on the man, the one on the man, the one oh, on the man, no. the one on the man, the one on the screen. The temple connection confirmed it. I was tempted to go to Ireland to check it out. Access to the side and rear of the museum building was blocked by a dense clump of bushes. Bushes. Ah, I can go. <clears throat> Ireland. Cutscene Island not found. Uh, what? That doesn't help. Stupid scum VM. There's gonna be a better way of playing this. No, it is not. No. Nah. Oh, stupid windows. Ah. 
I've put the disc in and it's made an incorrect CD. Oh, I'm going to have to try and figure this out and I can't save it or anything now. Great. <laughs>